Welcome to Truth in History, where we will discover together how history becomes prophecy in the making, and prophecy reflects history as it's being fulfilled. Now, here's your host, Pastor Charles Jennings. Blessings to everyone who has tuned in to our program today. As we study the Word of God again and ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in this blessed book that He has given to us, because as the Apostle has said, the Word of God came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This is a holy word given by the Holy Ghost through holy men. And we pray that we will be transformed by this word. Transformed. But as we look into the Scriptures today, I want to point out something that possibly you have read over many, many times. Several different Scriptures, and we won't cover them all today in this program. But possibly you have failed to look at the full list of them together to get the impact of the opposition that Jesus had in His ministry. We cannot imagine three and a half years of ministry with so much opposition against Him by the religious leaders of Judaism of that day. The Pharisees, History tells us, see, see it was, a, it was a, a religious sect. And history tells us that there were about 6,000 members of that sect in that day. Now, one man said that he believes that Jesus was actually a Pharisee. He was a member of that religious party. I don't think so. Jesus didn't have to join a religious party. He was the Son of God. He was God in flesh. He was the manifestation of the Almighty. And He was a Pharisee? No. That was a Jewish rabbi that came up with that. And because he doesn't understand who Jesus was and is, But Jesus had so much opposition in His ministry, and we want to list some of these. And you've read them over many times in your reading of Scripture in the New Testament. But I want to make a list of them, and you'll see the impact of false religions' accusations against Jesus Christ. False religions. It's accusations of false religions. Now, the Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 16, he had some opposition and therefore he wrote this in that verse. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Wow. Am I therefore your enemy? just simply because I tell you the truth? Jesus, in one incident recorded in the Gospels, He told them, He told the Pharisees, you hate me and you want to kill me simply because I have told you the truth. If you were Abraham's seed, you wouldn't be acting like this because Abraham didn't act like this. Abraham was a man of faith. Let's begin. In Matthew chapter 9, this is number 1. These are false religions, accusations against Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 9, 10 and 11. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans, And sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. 
And when the Pharisees saw it, oh, this self-righteous bunch, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? A publican was a tax collector. Now, there were two different types of publicans. There were publicans who worked for Rome that actually bought the taxes of a certain district. And then we'll say that Rome wanted, hypothetically, they wanted, in our own modern terms, they wanted $1,000 out of that district. This publican, who was unethical, crooked, would force, he would put a lot of pressure, coerce people to pay more than their share so that he could collect, we'll say, $1,500. Instead of 1000 he could collect 1500 He'd give Rome the thousand and keep the five hundred for himself. Crooked. Crooked as a barrel of snakes. And then the second class were sinners. And Jesus went into the house and sat with these people. I forgot to tell you, the second category of publicans were those who simply sat at the gate or at a bridge, or a highway, and collected a toll. They weren't quite as bad. But they were looked down upon as being criminal, because no doubt they were. But Jesus sat at meat with these people. And so therefore the, the Pharisees, approached the disciples of Jesus, said, Why is your master eating with sinners, with criminals, with the publicans? They accused him of being a keeper of bad company. Number one, a keeper of bad company. Let's go to Mark chapter 3, and we read this. In Mark chapter 6, excuse me, Mark chapter 6 and verse 3. Is this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Because, as we read in Verse 1 and 2, when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were ast astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? And then they said, Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? They were offended. They considered him, number two, of poor common stock. They failed to recognize his deity. Oh, he's just, he's just an old Joe, that's all. He's just one of us. Oh, he's, uh, he's, he's uh, a brother to James and Josie and Judas and Simon. We know them. They're just common men, and so is this Jesus. He's just poor, common stock. They would not recognize, they would not recognize who Jesus was. Now this incident in Mark 6 took place in Galilee. That was his home territory. That was his home base, Nazareth of Galilee. So he's just one of us. They failed to recognize who Jesus really was. And number three, 
this same passage of Scripture, Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. They considered him just a laborer, a carpenter, a lowly worker. That's it. That's all he is. He's just a carpenter. Is this not the carpenter? We saw him in the shop there. He's nothing special. He's just a laborer. That's all. In Mark chapter 3, verse 22, we read this. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and the prince of the devils casteth, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his goods. The accusation of false religion was that Jesus was possessed by Beelzebub, demon-possessed, the prince of the devils, the prince of the devils. And Beelzebub was called the god of the flies, or the god of the trash heap, where all the maggots were, and all the flies were, that's Beelzebub, and Jesus is possessed by that demonic spirit, was the accusation of false religion. These Pharisees, these Jewish Pharisees, said that the Son of God was possessed by the God of the flies, the God of the trash heap. That's the accusation number four. And then we go to John, John chapter 7, verse 41. It tells us this, Others said, This is the Christ. Now you see, He, he was at the Feast of Tabernacles. Some said he was a prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? You mean that Roman province, province excuse me, that Roman province that was in the north of Palestine where the poor people lived. This man cannot be the Christ. He cannot be a prophet of God. He's from the wrong neighborhood. He's from the wrong neighborhood. Then as we drop down in that same chapter, verse 52, They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? In other words, Look it, there's no prophet going to come out of that neighborhood. Where is the prophecies of the Hebrew prophets saying that he's going to come from that area? Oh, we want a prophet out of Jerusalem. We would accept a prophet out of Bethlehem. But no, this man's Jesus of Nazareth. He's from that neighborhood. He's from the wrong neighborhood. But as we go to John chapter 7, there's several accusations that are leveled against Jesus in this chapter. John chapter 7, verse number 10. And some of them may overlap with one another. But when his brethren were gone up, 
Then went he up also unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him, for some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nope, he's not a good man. He deceives the people. Howbeit no man spake open, openly of him for fear of the Jews. The Jews of that day, they were murmuring. They, some of them said, He's a prophet. Others said, He's a good man. But some Jews said, He's a deceiver. He's nothing but a deceiver and a hypocrite. Now you might say, well, the, you know, these things aren't too bad. But how would you like to have a ministry where these accusations are leveled at you practically every day? Could you function under the stress? Could you function under the stress? In John chapter 7, verse 14 and 15, now about, the midst, now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? He's an unlearned person. Accusation number seven. He's unlearned. He never went to our Bible college. He never went to the rabbinical schools of that day. He's unlearned. How does he have all this wisdom? Where does he get it? We cannot, we cannot accept him because he is unlearned. Now these, it says, then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? And there was murmuring. Some said he's a good man, others said he's a deceiver. Well, there's people even today still say the same thing. Now, we must realize that it was the Pharisees, the Jewish Pharisees, and the scribes, and the Sadducees, and the Herodians, and sometimes just the common people that were coming against the Lord Jesus. But everywhere he went, the Bible tells us he went about doing good. But everywhere he went, every meeting, everything that he did good, there was somebody as an opposer, as a devil. And the word devil means adversary or opposer. And it was the devil in these people. Well, who's confronting the Lord Jesus today. There are people today, religious people, there are people even to this very day that would love to openly oppose Jesus Christ and dethrone Him. And they have come up with all types of accusations against Him. Keeper of bad company of poor common stock, a laborer possessed of the devil, from the wrong neighborhood, a deceiver, a hypocrite, and now unlearned. Let's read another one. In verse 16, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he will he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God, or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no righteousness, no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? 
the people answered and said, Thou hast a devil. Thou hast a devil. They accused him of being demon possessed. Your mind is perverted. Your spirit is perverted. You're not from God. You're from the devil. You're a spokesman of the devil. Do you know, several years ago, an American psychologist and psychiatrists, a few of them got together and they read the New Testament, especially Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they wrote an article, and this is what it said, that Jesus Christ was a self-deceived religious fanatic. He was a psycho. Well, that's the same thing that the people of, of Jesus' day said about him. These people came to him, scribes, Pharisees, these were the religious people that could influence thousands. And then he had a persecution complex. A persecution complex. Verse 20, who goeth about to kill thee? Ah, oh, there's nobody out to kill you. You're just, you, you, you have a complex. You have a religious complex. You need to get over it. That's what they're saying. Well, do you know that a lot of liberals today are saying of Christians, oh, you have a persecution complex. Get over it. Because we see a threat against our Western civilization and our way of life, our Christian way of life. And the liberals are saying, oh, you're self-deceived. Oh, you're just uh, conspiracy nuts. There's nothing going on. And there have been psychologists that have said every conservative Christian in America, speaking mainly of Americans, Every Christian conservative in this country is mentally ill. They have said that. Something wrong with them mentally. That's the same accusation they leveled against Jesus. He had a persecution complex. Now, that's eight Accusations 8 and 9. He was possessed of the devil, had a persecution complex. But we drop down to verse number 23. But I'm going to read 21 and 22 for the context. Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers, and ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, ye are angry at me, because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day. He is a provoker to anger. A provoker to anger. This man, Jesus, just provokes people. He makes us angry. Jesus had to endure every one of these accusations. He makes us mad. And Jesus Christ still makes a lot of people mad. Not only the Pharisees, the religious Jewish Pharisees of our day. But he even makes some people that are just are religious mad. In verse 43, we read another one. 
So there was a division among the people because of him. You might say, well, that, that's mighty short. That doesn't say much. But the implication is, this man who came into the midst of that society, which was politically Roman and religiously Jewish, and he upset the religious authorities, and he divided the people. Some said, I'm going to follow him. Others said, he's the Christ, a good man, a prophet of God. What do you think that the Jewish Pharisees were thinking? We are losing influence and control over the people. He's dividing the people. We have got to get rid of him. We must get rid of this man, Jesus Christ. He's a divider of the people. I'm pointing these things out, folks, to let you know concerning false religions, accusations against the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure you have read them many times in the Bible, but never put them all together. That's what I'm trying to help us to understand, the impact of all these accusations against the Lord Jesus. They hated Him. The Pharisees hated Him. The Sadducees, the Herodians, they hated Him. But the common people heard Him gladly. We would like to make this free offer of our magazine that will come to your house if you just simply call us or write us. We'll be more than happy to put you on our mailing list. And yes, it's free. And as the Lord leads you to support this ministry, that's what we want. Because we don't ask for funds. We don't come up with ways to make you feel guilty or promise you some great returns. All we say is the Lord bless you. The Lord Jesus Christ bless you and increase you and increase your household and prosper you for your faithfulness to the ministry and to the cause of the gospel. Because there's in this magazine a variety of different articles that no doubt you will never see in any other magazine, Christian magazine. So therefore, this ministry, we like to say, is not bound. The Word of God is not bound in this ministry. God richly bless you until next time. For any material offered on this program, please write or call for your copy today. May God bless you for your response and for being a part of this end-time ministry.